Oh, all right. Let's start lying on our backs then and just put a blanket or something under your head, not super high, but just enough to make your neck a little more comfortable. Your, your dish rag, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is your dish rag. <laughs> And just feet flat, <clears throat> knees to the ceiling. Take a moment to kind of check in if you need to do a few pelvic tilts. Just see how stiff your pelvis feels. Y'all just warmed up with some yoga, so you might be feeling a little less stiff than I am. So just rock the pelvis front and back a second. Check in with the neck, maybe rock the head side to side. Just noticing maybe where you feel a little more stiff or any areas in the body that feel stiff. And just kind of try to work with those throughout the class, bringing some movement back, some gentle, easy movements. Hello. And then bring your hands up to your rib cage, maybe to the side of the ribs. Go ahead and feel like you're engaging your scoop, so you're drawing your abdominals in. Feels like you're pulling your bony hip bones apart, the navel, the spine, the ribs draw down and together. It's like you're cinching up a corset. And then with your hands on your ribs, feel that breath go in and out through the rib cage, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just check in. Notice the quality of the breath. Does it come up into the lungs easily? Does it feel restricted? And then focus on the back ribs, really trying to engage the back ribs, fill the rib cage, pushing against the floor underneath you. Still holding in that belly, the abdominals, transversus abdominus engaged. And begin to do some figure eights on the ceiling with your nose, just loosening up the neck. Ease the tension out of your lower jaw. Notice if that cinching in creates tension there, pulls on your lower jaw. You can always prop the head up higher to lessen that. And reverse your figure eights. And then let's move back into focusing on the pelvis. So now that you've got the scoop going, the abdomen engaged, move back into those pelvic tilts. Really breathe deeply into the lungs, into the rib cage as you tilt the pelvis towards the head and then tilt it away from you, creating space in the low back. Just rocking it forward and back. Trying to keep the ribs drawing in throughout the movement. And then come to a neutral pelvis. So your ASIS bones, your bony hip bones, your pubic bone are parallel with the floor, their level. The abs are engaged. Try and just use your pelvic floor, your lower abs. Rock from left to right with the pelvis, rocking it side to side without moving the knees. So the legs stay still. It's just the pelvis rocking side to side. And keep breathing deeply into the lungs into the back body. We're gonna check in. Notice if your pelvis feels level, we're gonna do a little pelvic leveling work here. At 
after we do a few bridges. So coming back to neutral, making sure your feet are up towards your tailbone. We're gonna move in and out of some gentle bridging. So begin to come into your 12 o'clock position, your tucked pelvis where you're about ready to lift the hips, the low back flattens out on the mat. And just hold there a moment with the low back flat on the mat. Just feel a nice, easy stretch. Stretch through the lumbar spine. And then notice you're probably really squeezing the butt. So relax the butt and feel it in the hips. The hips are doing the work. The core is doing the work of really flattening the low back out against the mat. So not the butt, not the quads, the core and the hip. And just continue breathing into the lungs here for a few more breaths. Keep checking in to release the butt. And then rock to arch the low back. The pelvis arches towards the feet. And then go ahead and move into a gentle bridge, lifting up the hips on an exhale. And then the mid back, coming on to the shoulder blades. So just a nice low bridge here, keeping the core engaged, the ribs are drawing down. And move with your breath on your next exhale, drop the back bone by bone back down onto the mat. So focus on articulating through the spine, trying to move each vertebrae. Inhale at the bottom, exhale, curl, tuck the pelvis. Really try to get the low back to push into the mat before it lifts. So just checking in, moving slowly, getting the whole spine moving in and out of that bridge. And check in wherever you're at. Check in if you're squeezing the butt. Let's do the variation still where we're focused on the outer hip and the core to do the work. Pretty sure Jennifer just worked your butts and quads, so I don't feel too bad about throwing them out of the party. <laughs> All right, and then get back down to the bottom, rock the pelvis left to right, or you can take it around in a circle, doing your pelvic clock. And then take your left leg out long, bring your right knee into your chest, and just give your right knee a squeeze. Scribe it around in some circles. Circle the knee around, but you're really exploring that mobility in your hip joint. So just check in with that right hip, flex through your left ankle, and begin to really push that left leg into the mat. And reverse your circles with the knee. And you can even put your left hand on your left quad, and imagine your left thigh bone really imprinting down into the mat. Really use all the muscles in the leg to push that leg into the mat. Push the heel away. Very active through the left leg. And then keep that left leg active. Keep pushing down with your left hand. Hug that right knee into your chest tightly. And feel that push-pull with the one leg really rooted into the mat. The other into the chest. Engage through the core here and just breathe through the lungs. So we're really going to give the lungs a workout today as much as you can. Allow the breath to come up into the back ribs, the side ribs. So this is a little myofascial release technique to level off the hips.
get our bodies back into a level alignment and better movement because I'm pretty sure moving all the trees and doing a lot of the tornado relief work this weekend, moving around logs, trees, pretty sure we weren't always using good form in our bodies. So a little bit of taking care of them this morning. And then go ahead and release that right knee down. Shake the legs out a little bit. Let the feet flop side to side and just kind of check in. Notice how each side of the pelvis feels, how the hips, leg feel. See if you can tell a little bit of difference. And then we're gonna move into that left knee. So the left knee comes into the chest. Activate through the right leg, flex that right ankle. Right arm on the right quad, really activate through that whole right leg, push it down into the mat. And begin to scribe some circles with the left knee. Explore the mobility in that left hip joint. Get it moving around. Keep flexing though through the right leg, pushing it down into the mat. Pause in any interesting areas or some good stretchy areas. Keep pushing that right leg down even more. And then reverse your circles with the left knee. Use the left hand to guide it even if you need to. Explore the full range of motion. Especially as the left knee comes across the right leg. Feel a little stretch there. And then just hug that left knee in, reactivate through the right leg, really squeeze, push it into the mat. Hug that left knee in, deep breaths for a few rounds here, holding that activation through the right leg. Then release the left leg out long on the mat. Shake the feet side to side again. Shake the legs out a little bit. Check back in with the pelvis. See if it feels a little more level to you. So you can even repeat that at a later time to really help get your pelvis in alignment if it starts to feel off. And then bring the feet back flat on the mat. Reactivate through the core. So draw those hip bones apart, navel the spine, draw the ribs together and down. Those bottom ribs, take a few deep breaths into the lungs, the backside body. And on your next exhale, we're gonna curl it back up. Really articulate through the spine. Do a few more rounds of bridging. Really just focusing on getting the back. Moving one vertebrae at a time. Notice if it feels different now through the pelvis. And really stretch it out at the top. As you inhale, the ribs are still knitting together, but you find the length from crown of the head out through the knees before you exhale, lowering down one bone at a time. Nice, bring the arms up to the ceiling. Just finding your neutral pelvis, 
re-engaging through the core, take the arms up to the ceiling, and then just allowing the shoulder blades to drop back down to the mat, allowing the shoulder blades to rise up as the fingertips come up to the mat ceiling. So just doing that a few times, the arms are straight, it's just the shoulder blade moving, send the fingertips to the ceiling. And then the shoulder blades stay on the mat. Take the hands down to the hips, inhale there. As you exhale, draw the hands up and overhead. Find a nice stretch here. Draw the ribs down, make sure the ribs aren't flaring up towards the ceiling. And find oppositional energy with your shoulder blades drawing down the back and the fingertips reaching up. Yeah, and then just move with your breath, inhaling hands to hips, exhaling up and overhead. And do a few where you've got some imaginary oranges or something in your hand and you're giving them a good squeeze. And then pause, hands up to the ceiling. Palms start facing one another and then rotate the palms so that they point off over your head and the thumbs are out to the sides. And get a slight bend in the elbow. And let's start doing some circles with the hands there. So it's like you're spilling something out of your hands. Do some arm circles. Angel arms, whatever you want to call them here, but you've got that external rotation in the shoulder. You're reaching the thumbs away from one another. The core is still active, the ribs are drawing down, navel to spine. And then reverse your circles, just flow with the breath. Check in on the shoulders. Explore that full range of motion. And then pause, take the arms overhead. You're still really trying to pour something out of those palms. So you've got the thumbs reaching out to the sides away from one another. And we're gonna sweep the arms down to our hips and back overhead. So really just sliding them along the floor. Really squeeze at the bottom, engage the lats as the elbows come into the side ribs, taking them overhead to touch and then squeezing them back down. Keep really breathing into the rib cage. And then arms back up to the ceiling, shake them out a little bit. Straight wrists, just letting the arms flop side to side. Take a deep inhale to really engage through the core. As you exhale, curl head, neck, and shoulders up. Look out over your belly button. Reach the fingertips out towards the feet. And just breathe here. Breathe into lungs while you're holding this chest curl. Look down towards your pelvis. Notice is your pelvis neutral? Where the hips and pubic synthesis are at the same level. One really good last breath into the lungs. Then inhale, roll it back down. One bone at a time, taking the arms back into the ceiling. Inhale here, exhale, curl it up. Hold, this time lift one leg up to tabletop. 
and then the other so your legs are at 90 degrees in you're looking down out over your belly button keep holding this chest lift if you can while you drop one foot down and then the other and yeah and make sure your heels don't come any closer to your bum as you lower them down so hold that angle keep looking to the belly and breathing Feel the belly hollow out, east to west, side to side. Drop the left foot, then the right, lower head, neck and shoulders. Let the arms come down, shake the head side to side. Nice job. This time, let's grab behind the head. Send the elbows out wide. Draw the ribs together. Keep that core engaged and then reach the elbows towards one another. So elbows close and then elbows out wide. Do that a couple times. Find that midway point where the back really activates. The shoulder blades slide down. Exhale, curl the head up. Head, neck, and shoulders are up. You look towards your belly. And then we're going to crisscross it out. So right armpit to left knee. Inhale, back to center. Exhaling, left armpit to right knee. So you can keep your head lifted the whole time and just alternate. You can take your legs up to tabletop. And keep that crisscross going, or you can keep your feet down, so your choice. Or you can left knee into right armpit as the right leg goes out long and switch. Yeah, so make it your difficulty level. Do what works for you. At least three ways to do that same exercise. Yeah, I get the obliques firing up. And hug the knees into the chest, lower the head, neck, and shoulders. Rock the head side to side. Hug the knees into the chest. Starting to wake up the abs a little bit. And then hug one knee to your chest or roll to your side. Let's come sitting. And let's wake up those shoulders even more. So try to be right up on your sit bones with a nice straight spine. And that might mean sitting up on your blanket or dish rag. <laughs> and then taking your strap. We're going to group it really nice and wide and we're going to keep the core engaged so keep the abs going keep the ribs drawing down take that strap overhead we're going to hold a loose grip to let our hands slide out as much as we need to to send them back down and around and then moving with the breath inhaling up exhaling them down in front and make sure the shoulder blades are staying down away from the ears. They're reaching down the back body. And just flow with that a few times. You can kind of pause up and back anywhere that feels good to you. Even rock side to side, get a little lateral bending in with that shoulder stretch. Whatever feels good, just kind of flow with it, explore the movement a little bit. But the true shoulder movement by keeping those ribs drawing down and together. So that keeps the movement out of the ribs and into the shoulders. Yeah, and side to side. 
Find the oppositional energy with the shoulder blades here. So make sure you're really exploring that shoulder blades down the back. Finding some healthy movement in the shoulders. Nice. Let's go ahead and just drop that strap down. And bringing the hands behind the head. We're going to interlace the fingers, push the head back into the hands. Really be up on your sit bones. Nice straight spine with the ribs drawing down and together. Find that midpoint so that your armpits and shoulders, everything in the back body is as active as your core. And we are going to take it left to right. Find some lateral bend and explore lifting up to come over. So you're not dumping that lower side body. Using the obliques to lift up and bend over. And come up and over to the left. We're going to look up at the right elbow as we twist through the obliques, through the belly. Looking back to the center and unstacking the spine. Inhale here, draw the ribs down. Exhale up and over to the right. Looking up at the light elbow, left elbow, we twist from the navel, find that spinal twist, and then untwist, stack the spine back up. Inhaling, exhale up and over to the left. Twist to look right. Untwisting, stacking the spine back up, up and over to the right side. Twist to look up at your left elbow. Look back to the center into that bend and then stack the spine back up. Let's do one more each side. Checking the shoulder blades. They're going down on the back as you come up and over to the right. And look up at the left elbow. Back to center. Inhale it up. Up and over left side bending. Look up at the right elbow. Find a good twist and then untwist. Stack the spine up straight. Nice, shake it out. Let's explore a little balance work. Balancing on the sacrum. Coming into our roll like a ball. So check in, you can hold behind the knees. You can hold in front of the knees. So tight of a ball as you feel like getting into today. And explore a little spinal stretch here. Letting the spine round, look down towards your belly. Using your core to stay balanced up on your sacrum, see how much you can round out your lower back, your lumbar spine. It's like you're pushing your navel away from your legs. Yeah, looks nice. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. You can begin to rock a little bit forward and back. Keep looking at the belly. Use your inhale to roll back and your exhale to roll back forward. You can hold it at the top or yeah, you can start inhaling to the shoulder blades, exhaling back up, but try to keep your legs right where they're at. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> you need gravity. What? I didn't mean to do that. It was gravity. <laughs> <laughs> gravity does work against us here. Nice. And then send the legs out long. Stretch out over the legs. Find a little hamstring stretch. Reach the sit bones away from you. And then stack back up straight through the spine. Legs can be out long. But bend your knees 
so that you can be right up on the sit bones. So however much you need to bend the knees to do that. And those ankles are flexed. We're gonna send the arms out in front of us, palms towards one another. Draw the ribs in, engage through the core as you inhale. As you exhale, round out that lumbar spine, push the ribs away from you. As you get a spinal stretch here, bringing your forehead down towards your knees. And then start at the pelvis, untuck the pelvis, bring those sit bones straight back down to the floor as you stack the spine up straight in one bone at a time. So the ribs are coming, or the navel is coming up and under the ribs as you round up and over a railing or beach ball. So here we go, exhaling, tuck the pelvis, round that lumbar spine away, push out through the heels. Inhale, untuck the pelvis, stack it back up straight. There's two, let's do at least three more. Exhaling, spine stretching, allow the shoulders to drop back. Inhale, stack it up straight. Reach the crown of the head to the ceiling. And then exhale, tuck in round. Inhale, stack it up straight. Exhale, tuck and round. Make it your best one yet. Push out through the heels. Allow the shoulder blades to come together and down the back. Push that lumbar spine further away. Inhale, stack it back up straight. Nice, hug the knees in, maybe take them side to side. And checking in here a moment, maybe have your fingers facing you, maybe have them face away, so whatever way is more comfortable. Feet are flat on the mat out in front of us. And let's just move into a little reverse tabletop a little bit. Inhaling here to engage the core. Exhaling to lift and look out over your knees. And just check in, maybe do this a few times with your breath. Exhaling to lift. Inhaling lower. If you want to send the legs out long, squeeze the heels together, lift, and lower. Squeeze those elbows together though, behind the back. One more. If you feel like getting crazier with it, you can lift the leg up, keeping the hips level and switch. Level off the hips and lower back down. Nice job, Cynthia. Check in with the wrist. Take the knees side to side. And let's meet up on our left side. And grab your blanket or something if you want to place it under your head or you can just use your left arm. Bend those knees 90 degrees so they're parallel with the front of your back. Your back body is parallel with the back of your mat. Shoulders, hips nice and stacked. Arms out in front. Let's do a little bit of that bow and arrow, but first re-engage through the core. Feel your left ribs drawing up off the mat as your core activates. So we're gonna send that right arm out long past the left arm, then at the elbow, draw it across the left arm, and then send that right arm out behind you. You can send your eye gaze out to follow the hand, Keep reaching that right knee forward, bend at the right arm again, shoot it out along the left, and reaching out past the left hand, and then do that a few more times here, moving with your breath, finding that nice twist through the thoracic spine as you move through the rib cage. So you're twisting from the navel point. 
And in that stretch phase, reach out long from the right knee to the right hand. And then circle the arm. If that feels good to the shoulder, circle it once in each direction. Keep the core activated and lifting up off the mat. And then find a spinal twist here. So just reach that right arm back, reach the leg long so the ankle and the fingers are reaching in opposite directions. Find a good stretch, drop the shoulder blade down the back. Open up, find some gentle movement. Just listening to the body, see what it feels good. And then hug that back in, come back to that starting point. Re-engage through the core. We're gonna float that right leg up, flex through the ankle, hold that 90 degree bend, draw the core in, make sure the hips are stacked. We're gonna push that foot out. We're gonna make sure that it's level with the ceiling and we're gonna draw it in towards the chest. And just keep moving, pushing it away, drawing it in. Make sure the ribs are drawing down. Bend that knee back to that 90 degree, that tabletop bend in the leg. Take the heel behind you and then bring it out in front. Core's engaged to keep the body nice and still. And check in that you're not pushing back too far that you flare the ribs. So you want your core and your rib cage to stay right where it's at, only the hip joint is moving. Yeah, good. Two more. Then hug that knee into the chest, give a little squeeze, pat out the hip. Come down onto your belly here. Bring the hands under the forehead. Push the arms away like you're actively pushing your yoga mat away from you. You're drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Pubic bones pushing in. The core is engaged. Push the tops of the feet down into the mat. Feel how that activates through the back side of the legs, the glutes. And just breathe here, finding your spinal extension of your neck nice and long. We're just gonna hold this one, float the right leg up, pushing down through the pelvis. Lower the right leg, push the top of the foot into the mat, and then float the left leg up. And breathing, send breath into the lungs, into the rib cage. Load that foot down. And maybe walk the hands out. Find a nice swan, pubic bone down, ribs drawing together, navel the spine. Shoulder blades down the back. Push the tops of the feet into the mat. Find the length from crown of the head to toes. And then draw the elbow creases towards the ceiling. Two more breaths. Lower down, hands under the shoulders, push back, find a child's pose. Oh. Nice job. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good 
Explore some movement a little bit, either in the hips or in the shoulders. And let's drop down onto our right side this time. Grabbing your blanket or just using your right hand, right arm, your head. Back is in alignment with the back side of your yoga mat. Your shins are par parallel with the front of the mat. Arms out in front long, at least that top arm. And then check in, make sure hips are stacked and shoulders are stacked. Draw the navel to spine, engage the core, feel the right ribs lift up and off the mat. And we'll start that bow and arrow. So we'll send the left arm out past the right. We'll draw the fingertips up the right arm, bending at the left elbow, shooting that arm out behind us. Find a nice twist through the spine. And draw that left arm back in, send it out long over the right. And keep reaching that top knee, the left knee forward as you do a few more here. You can follow your hand with your eyes. I can hold or move around as you feel called to. Explore some good areas of stretch. Maybe do one more bow and arrow and then start some circles. Just check in, each shoulder is different, right? Do what feels safe and good to that shoulder. Keep lifting those bottom ribs up and off the mat. Getting some nice therapeutic work in today. All right, and then coming back to center with the arms. Facing, laying on our right side, we're gonna move into that bend and press with that top leg. So the knee lifts up to shoulder height. Left foot, top of the foot is parallel with the ceiling. Our core is still actively engaging. We're gonna push that right heel away and even take it slightly behind the body and then draw it back in. Move through a few of these. Just explore how it feels to get the hip moving more than anything. And make sure the core is staying nice and still. Only those lower joints are working. And are you still breathing deeply up into the lungs? Feel the ribs expand. And then bend that 90 degree bend of the knee. The ankle's still flat, that top of the foot is still flat. And we're gonna send it back behind us and bring it back forward. And here's where you really wanna check in with the core. Don't let the upper body move around in space. Keep your movement small enough that all of that stays still. Woo, but that outer hip's working. A few more. Moving with the breath. And maybe one last one. Hug that knee down, pat it out, whatever you need to do. And then let's roll back onto our bellies. And bring your fingers up onto your low back. Maybe you can interlace the fingers. 
whatever feels comfortable to you in the shoulders here. And then come on to your right cheek. Your right cheek is on the floor and your shoulders are kind of rounding forward. They're nice and relaxed. Take a breath here. As we inhale, we're gonna engage through the core, reach back with those fingertips as we lift head, neck, and shoulders, feet, ankles, knees, even off the mat. So it's kind of like we're up into a lotus. We're gonna breathe here. We're gonna kick in towards the buttocks two times. And then we're gonna exhale, lower back down, come onto the left cheek this time. Allow the shoulders to relax forward. As you inhale, draw it up. So kind of in slow motion here, our double leg kick in towards the buttocks. Lower back down on your exhale, coming onto the right cheek this time. Allow those shoulders to relax for a second and then inhale, float it all back up. Push the pubic bone down, the active navel, kick, kick. And rolling back down, come onto the left cheek. Let's do two more. Inhale, pulls you up, pushes the hands away. Kicking in twice. Lower back down, opposite cheek. Inhale, float it all up. Push the pubic bone down, draw the ribs together. Kick, kick. And then lower back down. Let the shoulders roll forward, rock the hips side to side. And let's bring the hands under the shoulders, push back, find another child's pose. Really activate through the arms, pull the shoulder blades down the back and just see if you can kind of circle the shoulder blades along the rib cage. Just kind of explore that movement of the shoulder blade moving along the rib cage. See what you find there. Maybe lift up, nod forehead into the knees. So it's just a slight lifting, rounding of the spine really to explore a stretch through the shoulders with the hands pushing into the mat. Then release that, drop the shoulder blades back down the, the back. So it's just exploring some shoulder stretching. Is that making sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So it's like the shoulder blades are just coming up and apart and then they're drawing back down, not necessarily squeezing together, but just up and down, elevating and depressing the shoulder blades. While the psoas is getting a little bit of rest in that child's place, child's pose. Nice, and now our hands are out in front of us. Make sure your knees are uh, maybe hip width apart in that child's pose. Activate through the core, begin to round the head down, look towards the belly. Engage your pelvic scoop as you drag your fingertips towards you, stack the hips up over knees. And so you're in this rounded forward position. Begin to Roll up through the body, stacking over knees. So this cat stretch, we call it in Pilates. So now nodding chin to chest, drop the sternum back. We're like peeling off of a wall as we roll down. You're kind of trying to look down into your shirt. As your fingertips come to the mat, your hips, your hips start to slide back, roll the fingers forward. Find a neutral spine stretch at the bottom. So fingertips to tailbone out long. And then drag the fingertips back in, tuck the pelvis, bring it forward, stacking hips over knees, roll up through the spine. Inhale here, active belly, ribs drawing down, 
Tuck chin to chest, looking down into the shirt as you roll down. Keep those hips as far forward as you can until the last minute. Shoulder blades away from the ears. Neutral spine stretch. Reaching the sit bones away and then roll it back up one bone at a time. And let's do that two more times. Inhaling, exhaling, notch into chest, roll it down one bone at a time. Keep the hips forward. And then shoot them back, find your stretch. Exhale, tuck and round back up. Inhaling at the top, push the hips forward. Exhale, tuck and round. Yeah, let the shoulder blades just hang. Straight spine, stretch it out at the bottom. Tuck chin back into chest, looking down your shirt the whole way up as you stack the spine back up straight, the head coming last. Check in here, roll the shoulder blades out a few times, forward and back. Re-engage through the core and even bring um, heels together behind you. So heels are together, toes are apart. The hips are pushing forward. The glutes are firing and the hips. We're gonna let the arms just relax. Take a deep inhale to really draw the ribs in, engage. As you exhale, lean back only to your safe spot where you're not arching the spine, but you're keeping a straight spine. On your next exhale, come back up. Inhale here, draw the ribs down. Exhale, leaning back, keeping the spine neutral. So check those ribs, don't let the ribs lift. Take an inhale, exhale, come back up. One more time, inhaling and then exhale to lean it back. Very nice. Inhale, stack it back up. Shake it out a little bit. Nice job. Come down, just find another child's pose. Maybe curl the toes under, find a little stretch through the toes. And then come back up, come to cat cow. Position or tabletop position. You're gonna have the core engaged this entire time. So you wanna have a nice straight spine here. We're gonna do a few of those rhomboid push-ups. So it's a small movement just right between the shoulder blades. So first reach the thumbs towards one another. Shift those elbow creases to face out in front of you. Elbows are pointing straight back with a slight bend. And then we're gonna raise up between the shoulder blades, taking our mid back up to the ceiling and then relaxing it back down. Just move with your breath. Your tailbone shouldn't be moving. Your spine is not really moving out of neutral spine. It's just firing the rhomboids, the lats, as you reach that bra line area up to the ceiling. Find some activation there between the shoulder blades. We're gonna keep going with the rhomboids, but we're gonna send the right foot back, curling those right Toes under, so it's kind of a half plank here. Still working those rhomboids, but reaching out through the right heel. Finding some opening in that right hip. Feel that outer hip of the right leg take over. As you're still lowering and lifting, bending a little bit at the elbows now, maybe even. And then drop that right knee down, take a break from the rhomboids. 
Maybe shift side to side, find some movement. And then check back in with the hands. The thumbs are gonna to reach towards one another, nice wide hands. It's neutral spine, belly is engaged. And elbow creases are forward. Elbows straight behind and a slight bend. Curl those left toes under. Find that kind of half plank. We're pushing away with that left heel. And again, activate through the rhomboids and relax. And just keep doing that with the breath. Keep trying to reach the elbows towards one another. Keep looking down at the thumbs. Keep pushing away with the left heel, just a couple more. Should feel some nice work through the upper body if you're finding that work. And then relax down, find the child's pose. Maybe let the palms come back down to the hips or the hands, the palms up to the ceiling. And then roll the arms a little bit. Straight wrist, just kind of roll palm up and then palm down. Or just letting the arms kind of flop. So that loose movement, the kind of shaking and whatever after the work is just a little bit of a myofascial technique. It's called unwinding, where you kind of work the tissue a little bit, you work the muscles, and then you just kind of let it wiggle, shake out. Just kind of releasing any tension in the tissues. <clears throat> All right. Coming back to hands and knees. Try to keep the elbow creases forward, a slight bend in the elbows if you can. It's really that external rotation through the shoulders. It's a little bit more work through the arms or it should feel like work in the forearms and arms. <clears throat> and then just cat cow here, but articulating through the spine. So keeping the core engaged, it's not your full range of motion because you're not letting the ribs go free, but you're moving one bone at a time to tuck the pelvis under, lift to your angry cat as you exhale, and inhaling to untuck the pelvis bone by bone, lifting the head up last. Yeah, nice. Really explore the range of motion throughout the whole spine. So notice where your spine really flexes, maybe where it doesn't so much. Feel free to explore any part of that range of motion. Especially that lumbar spine. And come back to neutral, looking down over the, uh, straight down. Navel to spine, ribs drawing together. Start with the head this time, lift the head first. Allow the collarbones to open as the chest drops down. The tailbone lifts last. Start with the head, nod chin towards chest, round the spine one bone at a time. Just move up and down the spine, exploring what it feels like to start with the head first. Imagine your head is just one more vertebra. It's just a little heavier than all the others. Keep the core engaged, but maybe feel like what it, notice if you can see what it feels like when the core is engaged, but the pelvic floor is relaxing or the blood is relaxing. And 
And then come back to that neutral spine. And just shift side to side, the whole body. And then just coming neutral, looking down between your thumbs, just let the belly relax, feel the pelvic floor relax. Just kind of grow heavy into the shoulder joint and the hip joint. Just let your bones hold you. So see if you can notice what that feels like. Just let the bones do the work. Maybe you notice with that, with the bones doing the work that you're shifted too far forward or too far back. And that when the bones do the work, it kind of puts you right where you should be. Right in the middle. Just deep breath here, relaxing more and more into the belly, the pelvic floor. Allow the sit bones to just separate. Maybe roll out the head and neck a few times, explore some movement in the head and neck. Nice job. Hopefully you feel a little better through the shoulders and hips. 